paddling in Canadian canoes is an experience anyone can enjoy. Many hours of practice and a solid grounding in the basic skills are required before a paddler can handle moving water conditions like these experts. This program is designed to help instructors and teachers identify and teach these skills. It presents in self-contained sequences, models of good technique, analyses of the mechanics involved in performing each of the basic skills, and a summary in priority order of the main coaching points for each stroke. All of the basic skills are presented initially in a flat water situation using both single and double Canadian canoes. They are then applied in demonstrations of white water techniques. The sequences that follow include equipment and safety, getting in and out of a canoe, turning strokes, forward and reverse paddling, and support strokes. Whitewater manoeuvres presented include breaking in and out of a current, forward and reverse ferry glides, and the all-important capsize drill. Equipment must be suitable for the particular water conditions encountered. The semi-enclosed craft shown here can be used on open lakes and whitewater rivers alike. The more traditional open Canadians are best suited to sheltered dams and easy grade two river conditions. Canadian canoeing is usually performed in the kneeling position using a single bladed paddle. Some double Canadians are fitted with seats for greater comfort over longer distances. Single Canadian or C1 paddlers will become proficient at paddling either left or right handed and can control the boat without changing this grip. Double Canadian or C2 paddlers will always paddle on opposite sides from each other and can also control the boat without changing sides. Canoes must have fixed internal buoyancy to provide flotation when swamped. Hand loops must be fitted to assist in rescue situations. All bracing must be of the quick release type to enable paddlers to exit the boat quickly and easily after a capsize. Paddlers must wear buoyancy vests at all times. Helmets are recommended when paddling on moving water. Spray decks worn around the waist help to completely seal the boat. Correct individual paddle length is checked by measuring against the top of the rib cage. Canadian blades are flat, without any curvature, and have a T-bar for the top hand grip. To get into the boat, the paddle is used as an outrigger across the front of the cockpit. One hand holds the boat and paddle firmly together, while most of the body weight is transferred through the other hand and paddle to the supporting bank. If sitting, paddlers need to brace with the knees under the deck. If kneeling, bracing is used to give sufficient control of the boat. The spray deck can then be fitted. The correct spacing of the hands on the paddle is determined by adopting the surrender position with the arms forming a right angle at the elbows. Getting out of the canoe is essentially the reverse of getting in, with the paddle used as an outrigger across the front of the cockpit. efficient Canadian technique, paddlers must master enough turning strokes to enable them to manoeuvre the boat without having to change sides. This segment illustrates the various Canadian turning strokes and concludes with a summary of their application in C2s. The forward sweep is one of the most commonly used turning strokes. In C2s it is used by both bow and stern paddlers. The blade is swept in a wide arc and the bottom arm remains extended throughout the stroke. 
The top hand remains below waist level, keeping the paddle low and just submerged. Maximum power is derived from torso rotation. The major coaching points for the forward sweep are the bottom arm is extended throughout the stroke, the top hand is kept low, the blade is just submerged, and maximum power is derived from torso rotation. opposite of the forward sweep and uses similar body mechanics. It is used in C1s and the stern of a C2. It is rarely used in the bow position of a C2. The main difference between forward and reverse sweeps is that in the reverse sweeps the reverse side of the blade is used. Coaching points for the reverse sweep are the reverse side of the blade is used, the bottom arm is extended throughout the stroke, the blade is just submerged, the top hand is kept low, and maximum power is derived from body rotation. can be used together in a C2 to produce an effective turn if the timing is right. While the stern paddler uses a reverse sweep, the bow paddler forward sweeps. The arc of each stroke is shorter than when performed in a C1 and each paddler uses only the first two thirds of the sweep. Additional coaching points for sweeps in a C2 are only the first two thirds of the stroke is used and the strokes must be timed together. The bow forward sweep and stern reverse sweep combination turns the boat in one direction. To turn in the other direction without changing sides requires a different combination of strokes. The stern paddler forward sweeps using only the last two thirds of the stroke. The bow paddler no longer uses sweeps but draws the bow of the boat towards the outstretched paddle. This draw stroke is derived from a stroke used commonly in a C1 to move the boat sideways. The draw stroke is performed with the paddle shaft kept as vertical as possible. The top hand acts as a fulcrum over the gunnel and the top arm frames the face. The paddle is drawn to mid-thigh level with the blade parallel to the boat. At the completion of each stroke, the blade must be feathered, drive side towards the stern to achieve a smooth recovery. The main coaching points for the draw stroke are the paddle shaft should be kept vertical throughout the stroke, the top hand remains steady over the gunnel, the top arm frames the face, the paddle is drawn to mid-thigh level. The blade is drawn parallel to the boat. And the blade is feathered to recover. The 
Used in combination with the stern forward sweep, the draw stroke becomes an effective bow turning stroke in a C2. an extension of the draw stroke. It is used in a C1 and in the bow of a C2 to improve the efficiency of a turn while on the move. The basic coaching points for the draw stroke still apply. However, the stroke is performed slightly further forward of the body and with the lower arm still flexed. The torso is rotated towards the paddle to generate power. As the blade is inserted in the water, the drive side opens slightly to catch the oncoming water. The top hand acts as a fulcrum over the gunnel and the top arm frames the face, as with the draw stroke. The main coaching points for the bow draw are the stroke is performed forward of the body, the top hand acts as a fulcrum over the gunwale, the top arm frames the face, the bottom arm remains flexed, the blade face is slightly open, and power comes from torso rotation. is an essential moving turn stroke for a C1. It can be used in the bow of a C2 as an alternative to the forward sweep. Maximum torso rotation is required as the bottom arm reaches at full extension across the bow and draws the paddle towards the boat. Without altering the grip or the paddle, the drive side of the blade is rotated to catch the oncoming water. The top hand remains high to ensure a vertical paddle. The main coaching points for the crossbow draw are the drive side of the blade is used, the blade face is slightly open, the bottom arm is fully extended across the bow. Extreme torso rotation is used to achieve reach. And the top hand remains high. turning strokes for Canadian canoes, the forward and reverse sweeps, the bow draw, and the cross bow draw. These strokes enable paddlers to manoeuvre their craft in either direction without changing sides. 
In C2s, the major turning strokes are the sweep turn, the bow draw turn, and the cross bow draw turn, an alternative to the sweep turn. Paddling appears to be the simplest of strokes, yet it can be one of the most difficult to master. Efficient forward paddling requires the use of the stronger muscle groups in the stomach, back and shoulders, and relies less on the relatively weaker muscles in the arms. Torso rotation at the commencement of the stroke brings these larger muscles into action and ensures maximum power and efficiency as they unwind during the stroke. There are three distinct phases to the forward paddling stroke. The plant phase, the power phase, and the recovery phase. At the plant, the bottom arm is extended with full reach achieved through torso rotation. The blade is kept close to the boat and the top arm is slightly bent. During the power phase, the top arm extends at eye level as the torso unwinds, and the bottom arm pulls back to accelerate the paddle. The recovery phase commences as the bottom hand reaches the hip and withdraws the paddle in a quick upward-outward motion. Bow and stern paddlers should attempt to paddle in unison so that the craft glides smoothly between strokes. Essential coaching points for forward paddling are the bottom arm is extended at plant, the torso is rotated for maximum power. The blade is kept close to the boat. The top arm is slightly bent and extended at eye level. The lower hand exits at the hip for recovery. And C2 paddlers should stroke in unison. will not steer straight without minor steering adjustments. These adjustments must always be made by using positive strokes that do not impede the progress of the boat. One adjustment stroke is the J stroke. This counteracts the tendency of the craft to turn away from the paddling side. The J stroke is used only in the stern of a C2 and is the main forward paddling stroke used by a C1 paddler. The J stroke is very similar to the forward paddling stroke. The only major difference is that during the power phase, the blade is rotated and pushed away from the boat to create a turning effect just prior to recovery. As the blade passes the knees, it is rotated with the drive side turning away from the boat. The thumb of the top hand must point forward to achieve this. The paddle is then levered off the side of the boat just prior to recovery as the bottom hand reaches the hip. Throughout the stroke, the bottom hand retains a loose grip to allow the shaft to rotate freely. The main coaching points for the J stroke are the top hand rotates the paddle, the drive side turns out during the power phase. The bottom hand retains a loose grip. And the stroke is completed at hip level. The J stroke is used less frequently in a C2. However, it is the foundation of good Canadian technique and allows the paddler in either craft to alter direction slightly without slowing the boat. Reverse paddling is an important skill to develop if a paddler is to progress to more difficult whitewater conditions where tight manoeuvring is often needed.
The back of the blade is used in a plant position just behind hip level with both arms bent. As the paddle is pushed down and forward close to the boat, the lower arm extends and the top hand lifts to bring the paddle through in a vertical plane. To keep the boat straight, C1 paddlers must incorporate a reverse J at the completion of each stroke. In all reverse paddling, power is derived from torso rotation. Paddlers also need to look over the shoulder on each stroke to maintain direction. The main coaching points for reverse paddling are use the back of the blade, plant just behind the hips with arms bent, extend the lower arm close to the boat, derive power from torso rotation and incorporate a reverse J stroke to maintain direction. In a C2, the bow paddler may do the reverse J-stroke if required. It is not effective in the stern position. An emergency stop brings the canoe to a complete halt as quickly as possible and without altering direction. A number of strokes will be required. Each must be performed close to the boat and driven deep to gain maximum purchase in the water. These strokes are like reverse paddling, but shorter and repeated rapidly. The main coaching points for emergency stops are use deep, short strokes, keep the blade close to the boat, use the reverse side of the blade. We have already seen the application of a draw stroke in moving a C1 sideways. The price stroke is the exact opposite of the draw stroke. It moves the boat sideways away from the paddling side. As the top hand pulls inboard, the reverse side of the blade is levered away from the boat using the edge of the canoe as a fulcrum. Each stroke is relatively short. Most drive comes from the first part of the stroke, which is performed deep under the canoe. At the completion of each stroke, the blade is feathered, drive side towards the stern to allow for recovery back under the canoe. The coaching points for the price stroke are use the reverse side of the blade, use the gunnel as a fulcrum, insert the blade deep under the canoe, and the top hand feathers the blade for recovery. In a C2, the prize stroke combined with a draw stroke will enable paddlers to maneuver the boat sideways without changing direction. While capsizes are inevitable in canoeing, potential spills can be avoided by using a support stroke. The Canadian support stroke uses the reverse side of the blade with the paddle kept low and horizontal to the water. 
Using the paddle as a support platform, the boat is brought upright by using a powerful hip flick. The normal grip is maintained with the knuckles punching down onto the water surface. The body weight is kept low to the deck to aid recovery. It is often necessary to feather the blade for recovery if the blade dives deep below the surface. The main coaching points for the support stroke are Use the reverse side of the blade. Keep the paddle low and horizontal. Use a hip flick for recovery. Maintain the normal grip with the knuckles down. And feather the blade to recover. is as important as correct stroke technique in white water situations, so all paddlers must master boat leans before they venture into moving water. To lean a C2, both paddlers must be well braced in the boat so they can lift with one knee. The boat is leaned independently of the upper torso, which should remain upright if the paddlers can develop appropriate flexibility. We have demonstrated and analysed basic canoe skills as they apply on flat water. White water situations provide another dimension to canoeing, not only in executing and applying the various strokes, but also in the amount of enjoyment and excitement that can be derived from manoeuvring a canoe through rapids. Essential to mastering a canoe in these situations is an understanding of how moving water behaves. There are three basic water features that need to be identified and understood. These are the current, eddies and eddy lines. The river current is easily identifiable and is usually marked by standing waves as the water accelerates down a sloping river bed. Eddies are formed behind any obstruction protruding from the river bank or in the main current. It is important to note that the direction of water flow in an eddy is opposite to that of the main current. Eddy lines mark the line of separation between the fast moving main current and the opposing current in the eddy. As will be seen in the following sequences, all of these features can be used to advantage by a paddler who wants to cross a river or negotiate rapids. are used to get into a current from an eddy. To get most assistance from the opposing current, the approach angle should be approximately 45 degrees to the eddy line. As the paddlers leave the eddy, the boat should be leaned into the turn as if riding a bicycle. This prevents the upstream edge of the boat catching in the moving current. The lean should be maintained until the turn is completed. The turning strokes used will depend on whether the paddler is in a C1 or C2 and on which side they are paddling. In all cases, however, the turning strokes are timed to assist the break-in just as the boat begins to cross the eddy line.
breakouts are used to get out of the main current into an eddy. They are the most commonly used means of regulating the controlled descent of a rapid. As with break-ins, the approach to the eddy should be about 45 degrees to get the most assistance from the opposing current. Paddlers should aim to enter as close as possible to the top of the eddy, since this is where the current is well developed and will best hold the boat. As the boat crosses the eddy line, it is leaned into the turn just as if riding a bicycle. Once again, the turning strokes used will depend on the craft and whether the paddler is left or right-handed. In all cases, the turning stroke should be timed to assist the turn, just as the boat is crossing into the eddy. The main coaching points for break-ins and break-outs are Approach the eddy line at approximately 45 degrees. Lean the boat into the turn. Perform the strokes as the boat crosses the eddy line. And aim for the top of the eddy on breakouts. are used to cross a river without losing ground downstream. They can be performed facing upstream as in the forward ferry glide where forward paddling strokes are used or facing downstream as in the reverse ferry glide where reverse strokes are used. The angle at which a paddler approaches the eddy line to get into the main current will depend on the speed of the water. In all cases, the bow of the canoe should be pointing further upstream than for a break-in. Just prior to entering the current, the canoe should be leaned downstream. This lean should be maintained throughout the ferry. Once the correct angle has been established, forward paddling strokes are used to maintain the glide across the current. It is important to note that the downstream lean must be changed to an upstream lean as the boat enters the eddy. The main coaching points for the forward ferry glide are cross the eddy line with the bow pointing upstream, lean downstream throughout the ferry and change the lean when entering the eddy.
reverse ferry glide is used in more difficult water conditions because it allows the paddler to manoeuvre away from obstacles downstream without turning broadside to the current. The principles are the same for the forward ferry glide except that reverse strokes are used. The paddler should always look over one shoulder, usually the downstream shoulder, while gliding across the current. If any correction is required, only positive reversing strokes such as the reverse J, reverse sweeps or draw strokes should be used. Paddlers rarely need to leave an eddy in reverse. The primary application of the reverse ferry is to avoid obstacles in midstream. The main coaching points for the reverse ferry are keep the stern angled slightly to the current, maintain a downstream lean, and use positive reversing strokes only. With considerable practice, paddlers can develop an efficient Eskimo role to retrieve the situation. Paddlers must be confident about getting out of the canoe and must know the correct self-rescue procedures in moving water. After exiting the canoe, paddlers should swim to the upstream end of the boat. A canoe full of water weighs close to a tonne and paddlers need to avoid being pinned between the canoe and rocks or other obstacles. Holding the paddle and boat in one hand, the paddlers should manoeuvre towards an eddy while swimming on their back. Feet should point downstream and be near the surface to avoid being caught by underwater obstacles. It is important that paddlers practice and feel confident about the capsize drill on flat water to ensure that they have no hesitation when a capsize occurs in moving water. and recreational pursuits, mastery of the basics is essential for safe and enjoyable participation and the development of more sophisticated applications of these skills. This program has attempted to help you, the instructor or teacher, to give your students a better understanding of basic canoeing so that they too can ride the white water like these champions.